an alternative design for the largest hydroelectric power station in the world. The Grand Inga Project. For over 66 years, several companies have been working on the Grand Inga project. The proposal to build a series of hydroelectric power stations in the Bundi Valley in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Building a dam on the south side of the valley and blocking the Congo River north of the valley will divert the water to fill the Bundi Reservoir. At present there are only two much smaller run-of-the-river power stations, Inga 1 and 2. They are however no longer fully operational. The Congo is the second largest river in the world with an average discharge of 42,000 cubic meters per second. In one of the recent proposals, the maximum level of the Bundi Reservoir is 208 meters. And at the base of the dam, the river continues at 48 meters, making the head 160 meters. At present, China's Three Gorges Dam is the world's largest hydroelectric power station, with a discharge of 14,300 cubic meters per second equivalent to 14.3 million kilograms, and a head of 133 meters. Multiplying these values by the gravitational constant results in 18.6 gigawatts of energy, or 163 terawatt hours for an entire year. It produces 95 terawatt hours of electricity per year and is therefore 58% efficient. Replacing these numbers gives an estimated total of 335 terawatt hours per year for Grand Inga. That is roughly equivalent to all the electricity produced in sub-Saharan Africa by burning fossil fuels. This means that it involves so much greenhouse gases, that it is relevant for the world to get this project realized. But having the water in this Bundi reservoir reach 208 meters, it also means that the water level will also rise far upstream, flooding vast areas of land. Blue indicates the area that will be underwater when the water is at 208 meters. And in black when the water is at 180 meters. It is also relevant that the wastewater of many major cities, including Kinshasa and Brazzaville, ends up in the river. Does this pose problems in setting up a fishing industry in the flooded areas? But an enormous amount of land will be lost and many people will have to move. There is one more concern. In the Bundi Valley there are shale layers. This makes it more difficult to establish a secure connection with the foundation and edges of such an enormous dam. For a massive dam like the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, this will be less of a problem than for a thinner concrete dam. Reducing the height of the dam can also be part of the solution. However, this will result in a smaller head and less energy production. At a maximum water level of only 180 meters, the amount of energy will be reduced to 276 terawatt hours per year. But that's not the whole story. The river's discharge varies depending on both rainy seasons north and south of the equator. This means it is essential to have a large reservoir and if possible to have a pumped storage basin, which will also help to be able to produce a steady amount of electricity all year round. Taking a closer look at the area results in a completely different and improved design. Obviously, the Bundy Basin is a lot smaller than what could have been created in the original riverbed.
but the river is so big that it is impossible to build a dam there. So what if we only use the Bundy Valley to divert the river temporarily? First we need to make a solid foundation where later a dam needs to be built to complete the reservoir. Until then, a simple bridge at this location will keep the village and the Inga construction site accessible when the Congo flows through the Bundy Valley. Part of the valley north of this foundation must be prepared by clearing a wide and slightly deeper path for the river water. Then the two dams can be built to block the Congo River. They only have to be about 30 meters high. In one of these dams there will be an opening, so there is enough water to keep the Inga 1 and 2 power stations operational. Most of the Congo's water will now flow through the Bundy Valley. Next it is possible to start the construction of the dam for the power station at a height of approximately 80 meters. Parts of the Inga 1 and 2 turbines that are now out of service will be fitted in this new dam. This shortens the time it takes to get these power stations fully operational, so as not to interrupt the electricity production. As soon as the water in the reservoir reaches this 80 meters level, the head of the Inga 1 and 2 power stations decreases. One by one, the remaining Inga 1 and 2 will be cannibalized to complete these low-level power stations in the new dam. The dam can now be completed, and the new, much larger power stations built to be used when the water is at 180 meters. Opening one of the dams blocking the original course of the river stops the river flowing through the Bundy Valley. The foundations north of the Bundy Valley will resurface, and now a dam needs to be built on top to complete the reservoir basin. With the reservoir at this location, a pump storage basin can be added. This basin will hold 5.3 billion cubic meters if it is at 235 meters. And this can be increased by 40% if it is at 268 meters which is the maximum capacity. During the time it takes to fill the new reservoir and the pump storage basin, the discharge downstream of the dam will be greatly reduced. This is the time when another dam could be built just upstream from the port of Matadi. In this way, a navigable route to the new reservoir can be created to transport the bulky parts of the new power stations and for the future it can possibly be part of a navigable route from the Atlantic Ocean to the capital cities Kinshasa and Brazzaville and all the way to Kisangani, with a few stops where containers have to be lifted to another level. Fitting this Matadi Dam with hydroelectric power plants would make the total head of this dam together with the Inga Dam about 167 meters and increases the total energy production to 350 terawatt hours. The river section between these two dams can be used as a reservoir to ensure an even more stable electricity production all year round, creating another reservoir near the source of the river in the southeast of the country, can also help to store water in the rainy season, and release it when the discharge near Grand Inga is low. Another option is to better time the refining and electrolysis process for the copper and cobalt industry. Make it dependent on when there is an abundance of electricity. Finally, efficiency could be further improved 
when the Inga power stations are paired with the Renaissance Dam and Aswan Dam. As they are in the Northern Hemisphere where the peak flow is in a different time period.